Welcome to Cold Wars 2023. I'm here with Zach, and uh, this is Zach, the first HMGS convention of the calendar year. So, uh, yeah. what's your uh, what's your impression of Cold Wars this year? Well, we're uh, we're back at the Valley Forge Resort Casino, for better or worse. All right, maybe worse. All right. <laughs> the ballrooms are nice. I like the ballrooms. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you see any cool games? Uh, there were some cool games. Uh, I saw some uh, some very interesting tables, uh, like a high elevation built up Marcomani versus Roman auxiliary table. Twenty eight millimeter. Yeah, it was very impressive. S saw that one. You know, lots of lots of seats, so you have a lot of action. So I was looking at that and having a good conversation with the owner about the you know, pin tree technology and <laughs> cutting it. Yeah, the usual thing. Um, what else? So, uh, There's a very large uh, World War One, uh, 1914 Austrian versus Russian early war game. Yeah, not something you see really often. Not a helmet or a trench in sight. <laughs> just yeah. it's just guys in the, in the fields, but <laughs> getting slaughtered on the edge of a creek. 1914, the good old days. Yeah, yeah, that was a real a huge table. Yeah, very big table as well. That was really neat. Um, there's some other ones, some some excellent uh, excellent Wild West town, lots of Sarissa and foreground terrain there. Yeah, some guy put on a full size town. So you mentioned the ballroom. Did you see the um, really awesome looking like Sleepy Hollow horror oh, yeah, game? Yeah, yeah, that like, was really cool. Look at my buddy Nate, and I was like, what time period? Up oh, American Gothic. There it is. Now, maybe befitting our Valley Forge venue here, yep. there are a, a lot of AWI games. Well, the theme, uh, theme is re Revolution, after all. That is the theme of the show, and there are some really good ones. Um, I saw, let's see, uh, a Utah Springs game, which uh, we put out in a kind of first look teaser on Friday, but the Utah Springs game, really nice. Um, also saw a, a Live Free or Die appearance. Oh yeah. They were doing Birmingham House Hill. Oh, I saw that one, yeah. 28 mil scale, very cool. Uh, did you catch any other AWI uh, stuff? There was a Guilford Courthouse table. Ah, uh, Jim McGaugh, he's yeah. Guilford Courthouse game. Yes, he always puts on fabulous AWI theme games. I think he's usually running uh, British Grenadier as his kind of favorite rule set, and that was, yeah. uh, and that was a pretty cool game. And a lot of it in 28. Yeah, there are a lot of 28 mil games yeah. here this time. Um, not a whole lot of my favorite scale, which would be 6 mil. Mm, yeah. uh, I saw a couple <laughs> 6 mil games. There was a Napoleonic 6 mil battle that uh, was uh, French versus Austrians. I didn't catch the historical scenario, but a nice looking setup. But yeah, tons, yeah. Of, tons of 28s. That's great. I was talking with some of uh, the fans of the channel, and they kept asking what scale would we go down to next, Greg. <laughs> and <laughs> I, 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 I joked about two millimeter. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, whatnot. you guys are all fans of Rice, stuff. yeah, little yeah. little beans of painted rice. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, and so yeah, I had some good jokes with some folks about that. <laughs> well, there, there were certainly a lot of great games, but I do think that we, we kind of can't escape the elephant in the room mm. here at this show, which is uh, the attendance. A little sparse. A little sparse, yeah. Flea market, my favorite thing, small. Small vendor hall. Yeah. Half of the vendor hall was actually walled off, so they were missing a ton of vendors. I talked to yeah. a couple of the guys who are uh, vendors at the show, and a lot of them mentioned Adepticon, uh, which is I next... heard, that, heard that mentioned too. Uh, so I think a lot of vendors might have had to sort of choose maybe between this and Adepticon, and clearly yeah. Adepticon pulled, pulled a lot of people mm. away. Um, as for the sort of the player base, I mean, I'm I'm not really sure what explains the reduced attendance. I I will say this anecdotally for our club, uh, yeah. you and I are the only guys here from our club, yeah. which I think is the first time that I can ever remember that like our club hasn't run games yeah. at an HMGS convention. But in the lead up to this one, a lot of the guys saw that it was here at Valley Forge and were like, Nah, it's, like it's, I don't think it's so. It's not our favorite. Not our favorite venue, no. It's, no. it's it's way too spread out and chopped up. We are gonna have some interview clips uh, with HMGS president John Hollier. I was able to talk to him at Fall In last November. And even then, at Fall In, 
There were already some rumblings, I think, of discontent with this particular venue. So even in the months leading up to the show, there were a yeah. lot of people kind of saying like, ah, might sit this one out. And I think, I, I, I don't know, I think maybe it's time for HMGS to kind of consider yeah, moving around. Hi, my name's John Hollier. I'm currently president of HMGS Inc. Uh, we run three shows a year, Historic on Cold Wars, and Fall In. For Cold Wars, we had one club. It was, you know, Obsid's choice. It was either Valley Forge or not. You know, and what are you going to do? You're going to go to Valley Forge. You know? I think the guys would rather have, and gals, would rather have a show than not have a show, you know, just because it's in Valley Forge. Somebody asked about Valley Forge for, uh, for Cold Wars. Were the membership and the exhibitors consulted? And we don't, we've, we've not really ever asked in a, like a... Um, survey kind of way but we we do listen to what people say the problem is finding facilities and finding facilities that give us what we need the 80 to 100,000 square feet the on-site hotel with a decent number of rooms and a decent number of overflow hotels in the area the ability to have the kind of food concessions that we want which is which is really an all-day rolling restaurant kind of thing um, there's, a bunch, there's at least two facilities that we've talked to that don't offer that, don't want to offer that kind of, uh, of, 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 of service. I'm not sure there's too many good things about Valley Forge. So a fun day. It's nice to see tables. Absolutely. You know, the, everybody who is here at the show, clearly yeah. having a great time. And I still spent more than I should on <laughs> new, new lead and plastic, so par for the course. Kind of the case for every convention. <laughs> yeah. What's up, man? Oh, no worries. You want to hop in for an interview? Yeah, sure. Yeah. All right. So I'm joined here by Ed Miller of Del Val Gamers, a, a regional club not too far from our club, actually. No, it's not. No, we're not. We're um, based in the Philadelphia area, the Delaware Valley. Obviously, I'm from Jersey. Uh, a lot of you guys here at the show? 100%. We have our own room. It's been, it's been a lot of fun. You know, we, 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 we see we're having a good time. You know? I think everybody here, as always, is, is having I mean, How can you not have a good time? You're playing with toy soldiers. Absolutely, 100%. But I, I got to ask you this. You know, Zach and I were sort of have been speculating all day as to, you know, what, what is the cause of the lower attendance at this show? Because well, it's kind of inescapable. Like, sections of yeah. the hotel that used to have games, like, right. don't have any games? I, I don't know. You know, it's, it's hard to tell. You know, I, I don't know what the numbers are, but it's... A lot of guys just don't like the venue, I hear. You know, uh, and, and, and I get that. That's you know, okay? what we've been hearing as well. But for yeah. me, you know, I, it, it's... The gaming is all in one area, the, the tower, I call it the tower. Yes, yes. So there's been a lot of gaming there, and um, I, I just hope that, um, you know, because we are a uh, not-for-profit, you know. That's right. And uh, I hope we just break even. If we, uh, The way I look at it is we break even, and we have a successful show, and everybody's happy, then then it's a victory. You know, we lose money, then we got to figure... The, the, whoever is the powers that be have to figure out what we got to do next time to make it better. That's the way I look at it, you know. And, uh, you know, just look at the future, what, you know, I'm sure they're going to sit down and debrief, you know, like, 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 we, I, like they should be doing and figure, hey, what are we going to do next here? Where are we going to next? Um, what options are out there? And uh, start looking at them. I'm open to listening to whatever idea somebody has about these things, because we're seven guys on the board. We're, we're not omniscient. Um, and we're... We need to we need to listen to what's being said. That's why I always say we need more people helping out. So you know what I say to people who give me a list like this. So that's that's great. What you're going to flesh this out and make it into a real proposal and then help it you know lead the implementation of it. Because that's that's what it that's what I need. I need people who are willing to do that. So. It's what the organization needs. It's not me. Me. Me, talk, me talking in the royal sense. <laughs> John is right. HMGS is a volunteer nonprofit. And those of us who are members of this organization and enjoy these shows need to step up. Next week, we'll release a podcast on Little Wars FM of our full interview with President John Hollier. In that interview, he reacts to seven specific ideas that we suggested for improving future HMGS shows. Some of our ideas are common sense. Some may prove more controversial. Drop to two main shows a year and assist in creating two smaller regional shows to expand the hobby's geographic footprint. 
I'm not sure I'm ready to go to two shows. You can hear much more in that podcast interview, but these are proposals that we privately forwarded to the HMGS board three years ago, and again in 2022. Now, we want to share them with you, and to hear your ideas as well. So in addition to our podcast, in the weeks ahead, we'll publicly release a detailed white paper mapping out a point-by-point -point growth strategy. Cold Wars 2023 was a fun weekend with great games and an enthusiastic crowd. But if we want to see bigger crowds, more vendors, and better venues, maybe it's time to stop talking and start doing something about it.